Lubbock, Texas airport in early May. The temperature is now 78. Some indications of severe weather conditions developing to the south and west of the city. For Lubbock, a strong possibility of thunder showers later in the evening. Downtown in the emergency operations center at City Hall, the civil defense director, Bill Payne, is just leaving the office. Well, that doesn't look too bad, does it, Linda? Good night. Good night, Mr. Payne. Good evening, City Hall. One moment, please. Going home, Bill? Nope. Showing this film to Optimus Cloud. I'll be at the Embers. See you later. The sky still bright, worrisome. Some cumulus building up. So far, Lubbock's been lucky. For years, tornadoes have been hitting all around, but never the city itself. But Texans have learned to take their weather seriously. And tonight, Payne is talking to the Monterey Optimists Club in South Lubbock, explaining the city's new emergency operations plan for dealing with various kinds of disaster. And showing a National Weather Service film called Tornado. Before the film's really rolling, there's a message from City Hall. Bill, this is Lou. The Weather Bureau just called, and they're going to issue a severe thunderstorm warning just as soon as they can get it on tape. Okay, Lou, uh, call the operating department. I'll be right in. Coming back, the skies turn black. And already, KFYO, the local emergency broadcast station, is beginning its Several weather watch. During the past 10 minutes, indicate golf ball to baseball size hail in the vicinity of McKenzie State Park, with the hail increasing at this time. In the emergency operating center. You'll see, Payne speaking. Bill, we're all out here at the Red Bean Supper. If things get rough, let us know. OK, Herschel. Now, I'll call you if I need you. On the other side of town, the Lubbock firemen are throwing their annual bash, a red bean and cornbread supper for their friends. The host, Fire Chief Herschel Sharp. And among the guests, Bill Blackwell, the city manager. J.T. Alley, chief of police. Leading citizens, the press. Radio men, Bob Nash and Max Mott. Looks like the Weather Bureau may have to issue a tornado warning after a while. Oh, don't sweat it, Max. You get less chance of being hit by a tornado than being trampled by a dinosaur. District 1, Lovell Sky, man. Lowest road name to you. I'm receiving very, very heavy rains and very heavy hail. For Bill Payne, a time for waiting and listening as police reports begin to flow in. Okay, I'm still going east. The rain is still heavy, and I'm getting golf ball size hail. 89 clear. Have you got a unit out around the traffic circle south of town that can give us a report on that uh, large hail? 10-4. 28 level. I'm sitting over on 4th Street, and from here it looks like one big heavy dark cloud centered to around 23rd and every once in a while you can see something like it snakes down and goes back up again. Alan, we have a hook about seven miles south of the airport. Operator, would you contact Bill Payne please and tell him the Weather Bureau is issuing a tornado warning for Lubbock County. Radar indicates a possible tornado seven miles south of the airport. Mr. Blackwell, uh, things are not looking too good. Uh, I think you, uh, Herschel and Bob Shannon, Okay, Bill, I'll uh, round up the troops and be right there. At the Red Bean Supper, the singing plainsmen have taken over the entertainment.
In 10 minutes, they're back at the EOC. The city manager, safety director, Bob Shannon. All the city's key department heads. 800 operators. The radio room and switchboards are fully manned, according to plan. The emergency center is ready for action. Chief, are your units covered? You're pretty well covered throughout the city. Three level. Three. Okay, that's eight and eight. We've got a wire sparking through your bed here. Breaking down there. Okay, uh, oh, about the power plant. We got a fire. Maybe out there with Lane Howell getting fixed by Fire department? Yes, sir. All right. Need some help in the dispatch and office. Power is out. Need help in the Across dispatch. the street from City Hall. The radio stations also lost power. But as part of the emergency broadcast system, the station has an old emergency generator obtained as surplus property from the Defense Civil Preparedness Agency. The switch is thrown. The station is back on the air. ...on your radio dial, Lubbock, Texas, on the weather watch. The tornado warning remains in effect for Lubbock, Western Crosby, Floyd, and Southern Hale counties until 10 p.m. tonight. And now more music. One steady electricity storm. It's just lighting this to one right after another, just keeping the whole sky lit up. Alan, we've got a new hook down here moving toward us. Lubbock DPS, Lubbock Weather Bureau. This is Johnson at the Weather Bureau office. Would you advise the police department in Idaho to sound the warning sirens for a possible tornado? The Weather Bureau is issuing a tornado warning for the city. If they watch the base, the dark is cloud. We've had one report of a final. Raining real heavy out on 289. Wind's about 60 miles an hour. Rain is blowing to the southwest. Okay, the cloud southeast just dropped two hooks a minute ago, and then they went right back up in the cloud. A possible tornado was indicated by radar at 857, and a funnel cloud has been observed in this same area. A massive storm has just struck downtown Lubbock. All persons take cover. I'm out here on Erskine Road at this time, headed back in towards town. It's raining hard. I can't hardly see anything. I'm completely stopped. KFYO. Hello, this is Bob White, Carol Lee in Dallas. Could you give me something brief for my 10 o'clock? Not right now. You'll have to hold on. All citizens do not attempt to come into the downtown Lubbock area because hot wires are down. Okay, I'm on this hill looking back toward town. You've got a fun cloud hanging right over the city limits. Look like it's touching the ground. I can hear it coming. You better find yourself a spot. Don't worry, I'm going to get right under the table here. I don't have any contact with your station. Bill, they won't answer over there. They probably something going phone going out over. Chief Central's been hit. Blowing on. Tornado! Here she comes! DPS, we've been hit. Don't hang up. I'll be right back. The tornado smashed directly into City Hall and the police station just upstairs. For seven seconds, the lights go up. Then the emergency generator kicks in. Downtown, right in. Don't come in the city. It's hit here. It's horrible in here. Loud, loud noise out here in the north part of town. It sounds like another one's coming in from the north. I'm getting out of here. Damn, it's coming in again. Tornado, let's find a hole. The tornado roars on north through the city toward Country Club and the airport then lifts just over the Weather Bureau, leaving Lubbock behind it in shambles. Police station has been hit. Our communications is failing. The Lubbock unable to read. Any unit receiving. Lou, are there any lines left? Only incoming. We can't call out. Well, hold those you have and keep trying. All right, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Black, for the hotline of DPS still working. Major, looks like we've been hit pretty hard here in the downtown area. Well, the Central Fire Station's been hit, the police station and City Hall. Could you start some of your people in our direction? We need communications bad. Quickly, state police cruisers from the Department of Public Safety move in, circle their wagons at City Hall, begin relaying emergency messages. 
and Max Mott and Bob Nash of the radio station have cannibalized equipment from one of their mobile units, are stringing cable down the stairs. Give me a cue. I'll take it any time, any time, any time. Okay, you're on. This is the Lubbock Operational Area Emergency Broadcast System. With me is Bill Payne, the Civil Defense Director for the City of Lubbock. Hey, Dallas. Keep this line open. Don't get off this line. You're the only outside contact. OK, I'll stay on hold. Uh, now, have you had any reports of injuries? Uh, not, not yet. We just had a hit downtown. We, we can't get anything in, I'm afraid, to look out the damn window. Wait a minute. All right, we have extensive damage. I just looked across the street. City Hall is completely broken. All of the glass is out of it. It's standing, but all the glass is out of it. People are pouring into the EOC, the mayor of Lubbock, and members of the city council. They go into emergency session in Bill Payne's office. Program is structured to have the city manager do this. The operational aspect of the city, I'd recommend that, well, that, where that, that, we, that we go ahead and let him run this show just like he does day to day. Right. We, we're going to need a lot of help. Could you go ahead and input Austin in contact with uh, the governor's office and uh, get the National Guard uh, ready to activate? Quickly, the news is relayed to the Capitol at Austin. The State Department of Defense and Disaster Relief. The city of Lowell has been hit by a tornado. Then, on to Washington, D.C. Jay, what have you got cordoned off here now? Communications are out. But each man knows what he has to do. It's all laid out in the emergency plan. Right, our problem right now is going to be to work out all these motels along Amarillo Highway. We're going to make these motels one by one and go through the whole thing. If we have to, we'll drain those swimming pools. Okay. We've got six four-man teams going to do some rescue, search, and rescue. So we'll take this one moving area and also this kind of here. Okay, we're Emergency rooms at all the Lubbock hospitals are being swamped with tornado victims. Others are coming into City Hall, and just down the hallway from the EOC, Helen Payne, Bill's wife, has set up a first aid station. Is there anything you need? Not right now. We're doing pretty good. Do you know what area was hit hardest? I know about one area. It's supposed to be the 2900 block of 3rd Street. 3rd Street? That's my street. Okay, can you confirm anything at 206 Sherman? They have able to get a unit into there at this time. 89? Okay, they cannot get down to the central fire station. The roof is down on their trucks. The man from the Salvation Army said that our apartment was damaged. Yes, I know, and there's nothing I can do about it now. I'll see you later. The Lubbock Red Cross office has been asked to please contact the Odessa Red Cross on priority. How's the generator, Bill? Well, I'm afraid we're running low on gas. Okay, let's get an Oklahoma credit card. All right. In neighboring Oklahoma, they probably return the compliment by calling it a Texas credit card. But either way, it means chopping off a length of garden hose and using it to siphon gas from the nearest available car to keep the emergency generator running. As you know, Mayor Granberry, just a little while ago, declared a state of emergency for the city of Lubbock. Things are rough here in the downtown area and in other areas struck by the tornado. We don't know at this hour just what the extent of damages and the number of injured and dead are. We have received some reports of uh, dead in the north part of the city. Our search and rescue teams are out at this time composed primarily of fire and police personnel. There are many other problems that face us at this point. We continue to, to search out the areas that have been struck by the tornado and we'll continue to report to you by means of radio through the hours of the night. The darkness still hides many things. No one knows what they'll find at dawn.
Lubbock the morning after. The tornadoes cut a swath more than eight miles long, nearly a mile and a half wide, right through the heart of town. It's been impartial. Nothing's been spared. The downtown business district. The industrial areas. Country club and the Mexican-American section. Death and destruction everywhere. People still pinching themselves, surprised that they're still alive. What did it sound like last night when the storm started? Well, it went goose, goose, stop a while and goose. We was in that little storm cellar, and that's just the way it sounded. And the hail seemed like that big on that cellar door. Who was with you? My husband. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Yeah, part of like this, that thing there once blowed over here. Right. I missed it about that much. This time it got me. And the lights across the street ran up, went out twice before we ran. And you got under the bed? The kids did. I couldn't get under there. It just sounded like a big whoosh and void in the hail and the top of the ceiling and everything started piling in on top of us. What was it like after it was all over and the survivors started peeking their heads out? I don't know. <laughs> I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. He had to carry me to the fallout shelter. I don't know exactly what instant it struck, but uh, we were at the cellar door, and the rest of the family had preceded me down into the cellar. And uh, I wasn't going in that hole at the time, but uh, at about that time, something happened. What it was, I don't know whether it was noise or something hit me or, or just what it was, but something just made me say, let me in there, too. And in I went. We've and <laughs> we pulled the door to, and no more, and got it fastened, and uh, everything broke loose. We hear, hear debris hitting the cellar door, and the cellar door would, or well, we, we were trying to decide whether to push on the cellar door or pull, because it was going one way one minute, and one way the other way. You'd try to come in on us and then try to go out. Do not go into the downtown business district. Do not go into the downtown business district. Police and National Guard have cordoned off the area. There is still danger from hot wires and falling glass. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm taking some Coleman lanterns and stuff down here to Texas testing lab. Yes, sir. You don't have to have a permit to get in here today. They are reporting that the Great Plains building is twisted and uh, it should be secure. Some bricks are cracking all over at this time. Uh, there are a lot of rumors floating around town about the Great Plains building about to fall. And uh, I think that uh, we might contact some local engineers to get them to make a visual inspection, give us a report uh, to right, the uh, director of public works. And I uh, were talking about this a few minutes ago. And so we'll go ahead and get a team in there this afternoon. In the emergency operating center, a thousand pressing problems. Setting up a temporary morgue. Clearance of emergency routes. Food, clothing, shelter for the thousands who are suddenly homeless. Guadalupe Center in Lubbock is now in desperate need of 300 sheets and pillowcases, also some diapers, some children's underwear, and blankets. For the party calling about John and Jana Goforth, they are at Possum Kingdom and safe. This is from the EOC. Lubbock Coliseum is needing sandwiches for 750 to 1,500 people. Now, they'll be feeding from 5.15 p.m. until. Help of every kind is needed, and it's coming from every direction. Linemen from all the surrounding cities and states are coming in to restore power and communications. The Texas National Guard is there in force. So is Fourth Army, with helicopters and heavy equipment. And men from Reese Air Force Base just outside the city. The president's declared Lubbock a major disaster area. And at the airport, a White House plane's arriving, bringing Texas congressional leaders and federal executives to coordinate a massive assistance program. The city has lost 8,000 homes, suffered nearly $150 million worth of business and industrial damage. City Hall, 
The police and central fire stations have been smashed. The city warehouse flattened. Two main power stations are out, and so are the main pumping stations for the water system. High water at the uh, underpass, 87 North. Professional divers are needed at the three-deck overpass. They are needed very urgently. They need your assistance. Too much water here. Too little everywhere else. There's hardly a drop left to drink. Bill Dykeman of the Brewing Company has just reported he's shipping 2,500 cases of distilled water by quartz. These will be at the Red Cross dis Distribution Center at Broadway and Avenue X. Gifts of food and clothing are pouring in from everywhere to help the disaster victims. Day after day, the work goes on. People picking up the pieces, and no time to even catch a breath. For 10 long days and nights, the emergency center will be in continual operation. People working around the clock, eating, sleeping at their posts. Many not going home at all, until the crisis is over. Ten days. But now the book is closed. Checking out now, Wendell. All right, Mr. Payne. Good afternoon, City Hall. Yes, One moment, please. please. Thank you. Going home, Bill? I guess. What's left of it? It's happened a thousand times in these last ten days. But now you have a pile of rubble that uh, you once lovingly and fondly called a home. What do you do now? Well, really, that's just junk. We've got our kids. We're lucky, though. We really are. Lucky or just a grim joke? Well, actually, in one way, Lubbock was lucky. Because we were prepared for disaster, as very few cities are. Just the year before, the Defense Civil Preparedness Agency had picked Lubbock for a pilot project, a testing ground. And disaster experts from the federal and state governments came in, worked long and hard with the city officials and authorities, to produce a model emergency readiness plan. This plan, covering every conceivable kind of disaster and telling us exactly just what we had to do. Second, we had a working emergency operating center to do it in. When the trouble came, the top executives stayed together, worked together, made the key decisions. Finally, they kept the people informed with warning before the twister struck and full information after. These were the things that carried us through. And lucky for Lubbock, we had them. Because, well, I'm Bob Nash, and I learned that even in this day and age, you can get trampled by a dinosaur. This is what can happen to a town in the space of about one minute. It could have been yours, and it can happen yet, because nearly 700 tornadoes strike this country in an average year. And no state in the Union is safe. I'm Johnny Davis, director of the Defense Civil Preparedness Agency in Washington, D.C., and it's our job to help your local community with emergency planning and construction of emergency operating centers. But it's your job to know what to do to save your life if a twister ever hits. Whenever conditions are threatening, the National Weather Service will put your area on tornado watch, which means keep listening to radio or TV for further developments and be ready to move at a moment's notice. Tornado warning means a funnel has actually been sighted. Take shelter immediately. If you're at home, the basement is the safest place. Under a sturdy table or workbench, or in an inner closet or bathroom. Keep away from windows and flying glass. And don't stay in a mobile home or parked car. They're too easily overturned. If you're in school, your teachers will take you to an inner hallway on the lowest floor. Keep out of gyms and auditoriums with wide span roofs 
that could come crashing down. In office buildings, the same rules hold. Go to an interior hallway on the lowest floor or to your designated shelter. If you're caught in the open and see a tornado funnel coming, move away at right angle to its path. And if there's no time left for escape, lie flat in the nearest ditch or ravine. It's your life that's at stake. So remember these rules whenever you hear the tornado warning. 